Hi, good morning. How are you all? Okay, let me um let me invite a few more people. Mm-hmm. Is anybody here today? Hi, Alison. How are you, lovely? Okay. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna put some moisturizer on my hands. <laughs> it's so dry right now. What are you up to, lovely? I hope you have heating now, Alison. How are we doing with the connection? Am I slow? Okay. Hi, Julie. I can see that there are, um, oh yeah. Um, one of my friends, um, sent me some watercolor in the tubes and, um, you can either use them in like the little, you know, watercolor wells palette or, um, leave them to dry. So I thought I'll make myself a little, um, seashell watercolor palette. This like I am um hi Jess hi Marky hi Julie good morning thank you for joining me today hi Gemma um let me invite some more people um mm -mm -mm. hi Adrian yeah so this is my little palette that you can use this um as your little mixing palette. And I cut a little piece of watercolor and um, make a little swatch so I know what they look like when you paint them. Okay? So today is our fifth day um, of our painting. Hi, Abby and the kids. I know how to do the um, split screen live now. So if the boys want to join in and paint with me later or any one of you guys want to paint later um please do so um i'm going to give um a bit of chance for people to join in this morning i went out and gathered some um beautiful um botanical leaves for inspiration for your gut for you guys to you know if you have some time you can um just <clears throat> go and gather for um you know your reference look at this you can actually get lost and paint this particular piece in just a whole page you can really get lost in the details if you're a details person can you see these beautiful veins this is like uh, the most common weed actually well i don't call them weeds because um they're so beautiful it's one of my favorite wild flowers and it's called queen anne's lace or wild carrots Oh, hi, Will. Hi, Scarlett and Zara. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you want to, you can go back um, from Monday as well. And that started from Color Wheels, guys. Okay, so this is wild carrots. Okay, there are loads on the um, hedgerows and side um, on the path. And probably you probably have some in your garden. I do love them when it's white um, flower, lazy flower as well. Or when it's dried, it's beautiful architectural um texture brown thing i don't know i'm obsessed with this plant but just like anything else um you know with children wear some gloves and bring the scissors and just cut one you know for your re reference and this is beautiful for um press as well so it's amazing so that's one i'm going to put it in my little vase here because i might want to paint them later and um, look at this, my last of the um, snowdrops. Can you see this beautiful little brownie? That would be a good challenge for advanced painter to do a little bit of wilted away um, flowers. I quite like it because not very many botanical painters do the wilted away ones. But um, I think there's something about it that's pretty. I think it's called sublimed. Just like me when, um, because you know, aging process, we have a bit of wrinkles and stuff. <laughs> 
And um, sometimes it's handy to have a little bit of leaf as well. So that's the leaf reference. See? Okay, so go in the vase. Okay, and um, look at this. How cute are these? I don't know what they are. I've just found them on my um, on the lawn. Look at how delicate and lazy effect that is. Look at that um, shadow. How awesome. Hi, Jay. Welcome. Ooh, I need to invite Peter, my star student. <laughs> Peter, where are you, darling? And Gwen, you're here. You got your new paint and brushes ready, babe. You better get your fingers warm up. Hi, Sandy. Thank you for joining me. Okay, I'm going to put this in the water. Okay. We're not painting these today, but I thought I'll bring you, I'm going to put them in um in between my books later. This is a form of bluebell. It's not the wild bluebells because that, that would be illegal. Oh, dang. It's my um sourdough. <laughs> be right back. Sorry, guys. Well, I was telling my hubby Steve um, to um, pick them up, but he's working from home and um, he's um, in the meeting right now. Okay, so that's a form of bluebells, but it's not the wild bluebells that you can get. And anyone know what is this? Mm. It's the dry seed of the flowers called honesty. How cute is that? It's not quite completely dry on the plant if they are. This will be shiny and white. It's almost like um, some form of seashells, guys. Yes, I am doing it every day from now, um, Bex, because it's a reason for me to get up. I am super um, night out and I go to bed, bed really, really late at night. So it's helpful for me to force myself to go to bed and anyone know what this is this is for my garden it's um at the end of its leg so i thought i'm gonna do some flower pressing so it's um snake's head or fritrillia um actually it's the um flowers of the oxfordshire actually look at the beautiful patterns on the flower head stunning i have um some right now in my garden who are in prime but i don't want to cut the prime one because i feel so sorry about it so i thought i'll press this one i bought the um the bulbs from that snake heads um from the oxford covered market do anyone know this this is quite easy to paint guys see um so um, this is primrose, wild primrose, obviously, um, we didn't grow them, they just grow in my garden. Actually, it works really well in the, um, in the water, and I'm going to press them. They are, um, can you imagine, paint this, right? So just a bit of love heart shape. Look, just take one out. So you can see, let me see one that's quite easy. There, love heart shape, petals. And then you blend a bit of darker yellow in the middle. So that's lemon yellow and that's cadmium yellow with a tiny bit of brownie, burnt sienna, raw yellow ochre or something in the middle. And if you want to paint sideways, have a look, okay? All right, so that goes in the water. Got a few more to show you. Do you know what these are? It's just quite a nice, um, strong, textural leaves they are bay leaf the one that you um use in the bouquet de garni <laughs> cooking hi rumi okay peter no problem darling there you go so that's um bay leaf and do you know what this is i have loads of these um it's rosemary but look at that beautiful delicate flower flowers on the stalks stunning and I don't know what this is, but I thought it's pretty. It's got like a little tiny pink edges onto the um, the leaf. Look, underneath. 
Oh, we have really, really beautiful sunshine for the past week. Really, really does um lift my spirits. And this is I don't know what it is. It's one of the alpine plants that um not quite flowering yet. It's like a bell, purpley bell. But I thought it's interesting shape leaf. So you know, it's not just um standard leaves that you can think of. There's so many patterns of the leaves. Okay, so always look for the nature. This is just conifer from my hedge. Ooh. <laughs> and what about ivy? And again, be careful when you pick these up, you know, just make sure you wear gloves. Okay. I'm going to put this in a bin because it's covered in bugs. Ew. Okay. Um, that's it for the variation of the leaves. So we can get on with our project. Okay, guys. And um, today we are going to paint um, a floral wreath. Okay, are you have your paint brushes and paint ready, and you have your paper ready? <clears throat> and uh, if you um, struggle with the color mixing, you can always just use the color straight from the palette. Okay, especially for the children. Oh, and um, I'm going to um, I did my hair especially for you guys today, so. Hello. <laughs> okay, let's I don't think you want to see this mark for so long. So, let's get back to the other side of the screen, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring the paper back this way, okay? Right. So, today we're going to do a wreath. So, a wreath is like a circle type of thing so if it helps you can draw a little bit circle um, on your paper first okay um, obviously the bigger the easier the smaller the harder because um you know it depends on the size of your brush if you have a big brush go for bigger circle and bigger piece of paper and if you have smaller brush just go for, you know just have a try and test and see what is the best for you. But today, I'm just going to use the brush that I've been using every day today. Um, it's two pounds <laughs> from Thailand. But the key to choose a brush is something that will hold a bit of paint for you and comes to the fine point because then you can have delicate flick, fine lines that we can do it. Okay. Thank you, guys. And um, so, yeah, it's bay leaf, Becca. You're correct. Okay, so um, I'm going to do the easy way for you guys um, by using, um, oh God, I haven't got any circle thing that I can draw with. Let me think, what have I got? No, I haven't got anything to circle with. Let's go with um, hand-drawn, okay? No sweat. So just a very faint line. And if you want to go one step extra, apparently there's like a water-soluble graphite but I haven't got any so um, let's just draw just imagine you know like the wreath at the front door for Christmas okay so that's so many color schemes that you can go for can you see oh my god I don't know if you can see oh there um, it's quite faint because I don't want it to um, affect my drawing Jay you might have some in your makeup kit <laughs> If not, sorry, try your best. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> and the wreath, the key is the flowers are growing in circle and twine into the, um, into the plant. We're going to use different shades of greens, okay? So first thing first, let's dump in our brush. I have a little um, towel here for me to remove the excess water or you can use a kitchen towel but I'm trying to go for the um, reusable route these days or trying to be aware of what I can do okay so but we're not gonna draw green all around this wreath okay just imagine this is the core of the wreath yeah I have turned the oven off thanks because you're in the meeting sorry a bit of domestics going on okay right No swearing, I'm filming. <laughs> no swearing, I'm filming. 
oh man what have i done now okay so um i'm going to do like an, as soft as a curves around the core of the wreath okay so um let me see let me center it so just like that as like that okay you can even go like smaller brush if you want to that's quite heavy i'm gonna go for a smaller one what is this size um number two as well wow that's number two and number two <laughs> okay i don't know and then let's do another s curves yeah that's more like it okay and then we go the other way around. It's no no big deal, okay, guys. Um, it's no right or wrong. This is just imagine like the way the sweet peas grow, you know, it entwines around the the little pole circle pole that we have, and some twigs can be a bit thicker. You can press it down and go around that way, okay? There. All right. And then some of them might have um. I'm going to make it a bit darker, green. So if you go to the chart um, of our color wheel, let me bring it down. I put them all on the wall. Opposite the color of the green is red. So it all depends if you want to be like brown on the brown side or a bit more um, brighter side. Have a try mixing the green with a touch of green, um, red or orange or even a bit of pink. Yeah then you get a little different shades of um, brown, green, greeny brown. Okay, you can um, add twigs, like a branch, where the flower grows out of. Just imagine how the, the plant will grow, okay? So sometimes it grow upwards, sometimes it grow downwards, okay? So um, today, because it's day five, we're going a bit, you know, up another level but um, don't worry just do what you can and for children if you don't want to mix the color just use a straight um, color from the palette okay but um, I just want to tell you that's the aim um, you know to mix muted colors for better result okay so then we're going to practice our leaves quickly on a scrap piece of paper. So this one will go easy. We just press and flick. Press and flick. Okay? Press and flick. Like that. Easy. Okay? So go here and there. It doesn't have to be everywhere. Okay? One, two, three. That's, that brush is a bit too small now. You want the brush to do the work for you rather than you drawing the shape in. Um, it will take you forever. So just do your best to flick it in one go. And you know, you can so you know have a variation of different greens. It's quite nice. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to, um, to catch up because I've done that quite quickly. Yike! Okay, so while we're catching up, I'm going to show you, these are, um, this is like a tin, hand cream tin that I use it all up and I clean it all up. Can you see it's a bit battered, but it's a fantastic size of traveling watercolor. Mm -hmm. So what you do is, if you get Fimo or, um, hi Georgina, um, if you use a bit of Fimo, put a thin layer of it, I use um, a rolling pin and then I use that um, shape of the circle to press it down, I would say about a centimetre thick of um, Fimo. <coughs> Excuse me? I have terrible hay fever. It's awful. Started yesterday because I went out and do loads of gardening and my jumpers, um, it was covered in um, 
bits and pieces. And since then, I had to take loads of um, eye drops and nostril spray <laughs> and antihistamine. It was awful. And since then, I can't possibly... Um, Yes, Georgina, if you want some advice, I can send you a link of what's good and um, reasonable. So let's get back to this. Um, if you have tube type of paint, but it has to be artist quality, because um, if it is um, student quality, it will dry out and you can't re-wet it. And then you use a little bit of um, end of the pencil, press down into shapes of the and the amount of colors that you need onto the um, modeling clay, FIMO and then you bake it with the tin and bring it out leave it to cool and then you can squeeze the paint into those little wells and then there you have it you have a little traveling um oh Gwen what kind of essential oil that would be amazing if you can help me with that um you have a traveling um watercolor palette and I'm obsessed I have this little one here little tiny mint tin um oof look you can even buy these little um, ones and that's my tiny seashells with the paint too I'm obsessed and um, I have a few more tins that I can make a few things with I found this in Hobby Craft I love it and in M&S there's a mint tin but I haven't finished this yet um, this is the perfect one because the lid is nice and flat and you can use that as a mixing palette and look at this cute little one um, I've made um, a couple of these and I already given them away when I see someone I love it's just like oh no you can have it and I even um, cut up the handle and file them down so the hat the brush a tiny brush fit inside the palette as well Ooh. right um, are we caught up in this now we're gonna do a small rose now okay so the rose that we practiced yesterday okay like this um, all the videos can be um, re-watched anyway in my video section. So today is going to be the fifth day, okay? So we're going to do that rose here and there. Not a lot, okay? Not a lot, not a lot. So you can go for any color you want. Blue, pink, purple, whatever. Just going to stick with pink and purple because I know it works. And I've already practiced it. So this is the colors that I mixed yesterday. <laughs> and I just leave it to dry and I do it again. So... Um, sorry for the sniffly thing, city is. Okay, one. So just do it here and there. Two. And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? But if you are a perfect kind of person, then go for it. <laughs> Whatever float your boat, guys. for orangey color and you can have ones that um, just kind of blossom not quite fully open yet just go for it there's no right or wrong okay Okay guys, next we're going to do some kind of yellowy flower. The one that we did on day three. This one, okay? So we'll use like um, a dusty kind of um, yellow. Let's start with cadmium yellow this one on the palette but you know um, when you have the straight color of the straight color from the palette it works as well but it's a bit nicer when you mix it hand custom mix okay so it's the five five pointed petals okay I'm gonna do a quick recap here so you all um, catch up so one two three four 
like that. Okay? Okay? So, one. And the petals doesn't have to always be exactly the same, okay? Because it looks nicer when you can see that the petals are angling different way, like this. Okay? So, go. Go, baby, go, baby, go. If you want, oh God, my nose. You just go like daisies if you want. No big deal, no problem. And you don't even have to have solid um, perfectly painted, okay? And some's got three petals or just one because that could be like a side view of the flower that is not quite opened yet, okay? Is everyone following? You guys are very quiet. <laughs> okay? Yeah, look. You can even do like dots if you want to, okay? How are we doing? And then I'm cleaning my brush. Dab it in the towel. I might want to clean my um, palette a bit because I'm running out of space. Okay. How are we all doing? And then, you know, always step back or push the problem far away to see if you need anything anywhere else, you know. Um, but I'm going to fill it up with something later. So make sure you, some, you know, give yourself some space. Okay. Okay, next. I'm going to go for a smaller brush or I'm just going to use the same brush so it shows that you can actually do things with just one brush. Okay, but um, actually for this size of brush, I should have done a slightly bigger wreath because I had to work just the tip of my brush today, which is a bit annoying. But that's why planning is the key, guys, planning. But you know what? Doesn't matter today, okay? Let's go with the flow and have some fun. So I'm just going to use like a... Oh, it's out of screenshot. Now I'm going... I'm moving my pot. Okay, I'm just going to use a little bit of blue like that. Um, but it's too blue because it comes straight from the palette. So what's opposite to blue, guys? Look at the color wheel. If you haven't got the color wheel yet, and if you just join me, video one is how to create the color wheels, okay, guys? So um, please have a look, and it's fun. Look, you can create rainbow. And oh, yeah, today um, I'm going to paint a rainbow on my window to support NHS and key worker staff today. Okay, right, so I'm gonna add a bit of orange to that. I've got a bit of orange right at the corner there. <laughs> Yay, okay, so it's slightly gray. I think it's too gray. Okay, or if you want to, you can add a bit of purple to it. So it's like a purpley blue, okay. And again, like I said, you can always try, have a scrap piece of paper and have a try to see if that's the color that you like, okay? If not, then keep mixing, okay? <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. So for that one, we're gonna make like a lavender lee type or lilac, okay? So we're gonna use that. Um... <laughs> Good, please concentrate because I will give you some stars. Thank you, Branca. Please join me next time. Love you. I'm going to video feed every day. So it'll be like different flowers each day now. Um, so we're going to do lilac. Okay. So lilac will be exactly the same technique by dabbing. Okay. But curvy. Okay. I'll show you how it goes. So I would bring the stem down. Maybe I'll do it here. And I'm just going to dab. Okay, like that. And the paler the better because um, you can add more later with another layer, okay?
How are we doing? Okay. Loading the paint. Even just a few dots, just to kind of like um, suggest that there's some flowery. That yes, lilac. Good job. It is lilac, guy. Okay. Just even a few dots, okay? Just to suggest that there's some bluey things there, okay? Because sometimes um, if you have a um, a bush going, <laughs> you might not be able to make it out what it is until you go through and um, push some leaves and some, you know, some other flowers away, okay? Me. If you want to make it brighter, you just add more water, not white. If you have it like strong, solid, looks like acrylic paint, then it means that you put too much pigment into the water. Okay? So more white. More, I mean, no white, no white, no white, no white. We only use white unless you have like a really dark painting and you need to highlight it with something. Okay? So more water. You alright? It's my my youngest. He suffers from hay fever as well. Bless him. Um. Okay. Like that. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Nicholas. You can have a go to try um, video one. Um. I am covering on video one how to make the rainbow wheels or color wheels how to mix colors and day two um, I cover um, painting techniques so wet on wet gradation speckly thing a bit more blending techniques and a bit more wet on wet and how to do dry brushing and a bit of coloring of um, brush work okay and day three um, we went through these weird looking berries which went horribly wrong and a bit of flowers that we are using to put them into our wreath today now. Okay, a bit of feathers and a bit of thingy thingy. Okay, what's that yesterday that we made? Really? I can't remember. Seems like a long time ago now. <laughs> okay, now... What else can we what else can we do ah okay so let's go back into our yellow flowers to add the center okay at this point you can easily go into your gold metallic pens or paint whoops and use it to add to the center of your flowers but today we're gonna go to thank you Mindy. and um, today we're just gonna use what color we have here okay I'm going for, you can choose any color you want to go into your um, yellow flower. You can use the blue that we already mixed or something completely different, okay? For me, I am going to use, um, again, purple, just because I am obsessed with purple at the moment. I don't know why. And it's handy to have one of these droplet thing, um, or you can use like an old eye drops. Make sure you clean it out really well though. Yike! Okay, sorry about sniffly. And if you want to tone down the pa um, the purple that comes straight from the palette, you use the color opposite to the purple is yellow. Okay. And um, it's quite handy if you put your um, color wheel right in front of you or the side of your table, you know, your workspace, okay? Right. Thank you, Lainey. How are you, babe? Please join me. Um, I'm going to go in like that. It's quite strong still. Um, and if you're yellow, I should, I should have done it a bit earlier because then um, the purple will bleed into your yellow nicely, okay? But it's dried up now. So... Um, doesn't matter. It's all about learning. And I'm learning as well. I'm not claiming that I'm a, 
um, <laughs> good at any of these, but I don't know, it seemed to really help me to de-stress and forget about the world for a few minutes. That's good, isn't it? So since I want to show you how to do this flower um, when slightly wet, I'm going to do one on the side here, okay? So one, two, three, five, like that. Okay, and when it's still wet, if you go in with the center of the flower and then you dab, are you, lit are you watching guys? I'm just gonna dab some here and you should be able to see a bit of bleeding going on into um, the paint. But if it doesn't bleed um, the way you want it to, you use a clean damp brush, still damp, but not overly wet. Okay, I'm just gonna take some color off and you can gently help it to bleed out, okay? That's the beauty of um, watercolor, okay? And we'll do a bit more bleedy, bleedy paint tomorrow, okay? If you want, I guess um, you're not doing on Saturday, are you guys? Um, just because we are supposed to be staying in the house, so I guess I might as well do it at the weekend as well. I was gonna do five days and then have two days rest, but we're not doing anything. And um, Scarlett, you're not swimming, are you? <laughs> so you might as well join me tomorrow as well, Scarlett. And how um, how are Leo and Eden today? I have a few children um, locking in and have a go as well. Nicholas as well. So that's great. And um, Jay, is your um, nephew with you today? Hi, Elena. Thank you for joining me. Um, so, so if you like that kind of um, bleedy bleedy, you need to paint a bit bigger. Look, see, I went way too small in this, but I think for this size, this could be nice for a card or frame and give it away for someone. Do you know what I mean? So maybe um, do a bit of this, and then you can send it to someone if you already have um, stamps in your, um, you know, at home. You can cut the size of paper first and paint to fit that size of the paper and fit in the envelope that you have, okay? And then send it to someone that you really miss, that you can't see them physically. Okay, so I think I'm lacking in this area. So look back, hold your paint back, your project, and then have a look where you need some more. So I think mm, that's not bad now. I might add a bit more darker blue into my splotch of blue because it looks a bit like splotch but actually you know what that's quite nice and um, impressionistic okay there's no right or wrong today we are all gonna paint so differently today um, although I'm teaching you how to do this exactly the same but because we all have our own swag hi Liz so um, let's um, add some flowers or something there you can add more leaves if you want okay um, but I think I'm just gonna add pink roses because there's no pink on that side at all maybe purple pink or purple I'm gonna go with purple then since I already have purple I'm lazy to mix it and again whatever color you want okay just look and assess your project and see okay it's not quite even okay but if you like the non-even go for it whatever float your boat so a bit of rose oh way too heavy way 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 too heavy I think this kind of rose looks better with bigger project really. So it's probably harder to paint this rose in a small area. Okay. So even if you're gonna do like a five point petals or something, it doesn't matter. Okay guys. I'm coming in here and um, add a bit more blue. You don't need more pigment, it's just a two layers of the same color will make it um, more pigmented, okay? And now we're going in, now we're going into um, the greens. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. It's almost like an eyeliner brush actually. If you have, um, Oh, Alejandro, I have the recipe for cooked noodles. I'll send you some information later. It's super easy. Um, do you have any stock, like vegetable stock or um, if you're a meat eater, chicken stock? And I'll let you know, okay? So I'm going to go in with the green with a smaller brush, okay? And I know quite a few people who paint miniature painting that they use 
toothpick <laughs> to paint these little dots okay but um so that flower it's floating into nothing there's no stem attached to it so i'm gonna join it up to my branch like so okay so just go along your project and see is there anything floaty floaty that it needs to be um attached to something okay that one's floaty floaty we don't want floaty and um uh this one it needs a bit of a you can add a different types of green to to um to show that you have different um type of leaves too okay or even just dot because um you know sometimes when you look from afar um you can only see dots or some some kind of random weird shapes okay i'm going to turn my project feel free to turn the project around okay And roses, petals, I mean flowers are like, it's got jaggedy leaves, right? Just just do your best. It's quite a small project to, to begin with. If you started off big, then I think you're in for a win. <laughs> Sorry about sniffle, hay fever, it's horrid. Okay. Keep bringing your project back and have a look. And if there are any daisies that's got no center, just add a bit of center for it. You can even do flicks. Because sometimes like grassy curly cues, isn't it? Guys. Oh, hay fever, I hate it. This is the worst time of the year ever for me. I suffer badly. Does anyone suffer from hay fever? Okay, so that's done, I think. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. You you know, how long is a piece of string? But sometimes you need to stop or something terribly <laughs> wrong is going to happen <laughs> yeah so that's quite good and think of some kind of positive affirmation um for today a word that you can put in here in the middle okay um have a think you don't have to do it now but i'm going to put it in here now okay oh god i don't know what's the word shall i put in ah I know and I'm going to use I'm gonna find a super super dark blue with gray I think okay ready oh way too heavy My paint's still not quite dried. <laughs> Find something positive and put in there. Oh, yay. 
Okay. Oh, it said to swipe to the right and then I can join, get people to join. But how come I can't do it? Oh, do I go up? No. Do I go down? No. 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 Let's have a look. No. I'm supposed to be able to join um, by swiping to the right and then there should be um, the member, you know, number of people um, that you, the viewing and then I can um, invite them. But I can't do it. <sighs> okay, how do we do this? No, impossible. Is that it, Abby? Do you get the invite to join my split screen? And if you guys finish or you're still fiddling, I'd like you to paint this um, yellowy flower with um, purple to bleed in on the side of your paper. Okay, so. Abby, do you get any invites? I'm going to mix more yellow because I've got I run out of yellow. No. And again, um, you know, once you got the colors, have a try on a swatch and see if you like it or not. If not, do it again. Mm, it's a bit too dusty for sure. Yuck! looks a bit like diarrhea let's forget it <laughs> I'm gonna go for lemon yellow instead because um, that's too warm I think but it will be okay for the background okay so ugh. what's going on with me mixing colors not my day today Okay, and then while the paint's still damp and wet, I'm going with purple in the middle and let it bleed in. If anyone's new to this and you haven't got any paint, um, I can recommend, okay? Um, my friend Peter, he bought a nice looking set for about 15, 16 pounds. It comes with a water brush. Do you know what water brush is? And you know, once it dried, um, if it lose too much definition, I'm going to use my hand fan to dry it. <laughs> Okay, it's my makeup, f you know, fan in case you need to do eyeliner, flick or mascara and dry it quickly. I just use this. I have one for myself and one in my makeup kit. So for that one, it lost a bit of definition. I could easily go in with a bit more paint and dot on top. Okay, so if you want sharp line work and images, you do it when it's um, the base layers dried. If you want it to be blurry and hazy, you do it when the paint's still wet and drop it in. Okay, just like that. And that's how you layer things. Okay, there you go. And go into your green. 
Can someone tell me what's the time? Hi, Sarah, how are you? Hope you're well. Okay. Again, um, the green that come off the palette, it's always either too bright or too dull. It's never quite right. So just refer to the color wheel that we made on your first um, video, um, which you can be um, catch up. You can catch up. Thank you. Um, can catch up, um, you know, and then create it. Because if you want to dull the green down, you can either do it by add a tiny bit of orange or red or pink. Um, but if you want it to be solidly gray, a shadow of green, use the red, okay? Have a try because um, it's amazing and it's really good fun to do so, okay? Thank you guys. Okay, I better go. So I'll leave you with this lovely um, wreath and please write whatever positive affirmation that you would like to have in the middle of your wreath. And um, I'm gonna post a picture of my effort today and um, hopefully we can paint a bit more flowers tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna do um, one type of flowers wet on wet maybe poppies maybe something else i don't know um oh yay sarah yeah please um you can watch it on my um i think it's in the photo album and you click in the videos and there's a video one two three four and today is the five so um video one is color wheel and then video two is a bit of various techniques that I can use with watercolor okay oh I forgot to say um, if you want to if you have a little bit of um, a nice black ballpoint pen or sharpies or um, something good to use you know once this is dried you can go in and you know if you if you like this this is perfect 100% beautiful already but you can add more to it as well by outlining them and you know what? It doesn't have to be, um, you know, like solid line, like neat, like every single color have to be inside the edge, like so, oh, like so. I can't even do it. Um, so I think the sketchy, sketchy effect is good, but I'm a sketchy type of person. So, you know. Yeah, but um, the paint will have to be dried already. Okay, guys, that's why I'm feeling them. Because if not, then you make a big, make a doo doo out of it. Okay. So that's another, you know, effect and technique. Um, you can even easily go in, you know, the whole page with this. It will look amazing. Okay, I'll show you. Where's my sketchbook that I have made? Okay. This is the sketchbook that I made myself. Hold on. So, you see, it's like a repetitive work. Um... um repetitive work just keep going and add some colors quite relaxing and therapeutic okay um, and even just boxes and patterns just practice it doesn't matter okay it's not about the result it's about the process it's the state of mind of yourself that you going through while you concentrate adding colors um, and mixing the colors it's not about what you create okay this is not about this is like a child crayon sketch but who cares okay look this is just wet on wet I can create this if you would like to show you tomorrow if that's something you like okay look basically it's just repetitive um, pattern just keep stamping um, let me show you the one that I'm talking about 
Ah, so see that flowers that I've done exactly the same technique as this. And then whatever gaps, I just go in with black. Because that's the color of my soul. <laughs> okay? All right then, guys. I'm going to leave you here. And um, I'm sending you lots of love. And um, don't forget to put the positive affirmation word in there. Um, oh yeah, salt technique. Okay, that's fine. I'll do salt technique tomorrow. Okay, love you all and have a beautiful day. Bye.